It's time to stay awake Watching o'er the sea For we don't know what lies ahead Tempest or storm My duty is to warn Thank you. Well, I just wanted to come up and say good morning and thank you all for being here. Before we get started, though, I would like you all to listen to a song that I picked out. It's called You Say by Lauren oh, Daigle. I love that song. So listen closely to the words because I think my teaching will go along with that. At least I'm hoping that that's what happens. <laughs> Somewhere in the last few weeks, someone mentioned the battlefield of the mind. And when I think of war or battle... We're all on the same team fighting the same adversary. However, we're not all fighting the same adversary because Noemi's life is different than mine. Melissa came from California. God only knows what goes on out there. No offense. I'm just saying, we all have different backgrounds. So the things that I've experienced, the traumas, and the things that I've gone through from the day I took my first breath, to today, that's my personal battlefield. Same adversary, different battlefield. As you can see, some of my scars, these are some of my scars. God's will for every person is to be free. If you've ever been in a prison, not one with four walls and bars, although you may have, eventually, you don't kill anybody and get on death row, you get out. You've paid your price and you get out. Some prisons that we experience along our life are very difficult to break out of. If we're left to do it on our own, we're just not going to do it. We need somebody to show us how important we are and how special we are. In John chapter 8, verses 31... 32 and 36, it says, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. No matter what you've done in your past, God can take care of it. He has given us his word. Everything in that word pertains unto life and godliness. If you don't read it or come across somebody who can enlighten you in an area, you're not going to get deliverance. You're just not. Sometimes when you are in a place where you can get help and you don't, God may have to do drastic measures. He may have to go above and beyond what his word says. He may have to send an angel. He may have to audibly say to you, I love you. There's nothing I won't do for you. I will never leave you alone. And how do I know that? Because he did that for me. Mm -hmm. He did that for me. I remember when I first got in the Word, I wasn't a very good reader. I didn't like my brother whose house fellowship was at. I was very quiet. Never knew I was there. And things were going in my life at that time that were not good. Nothing I ever planned for, but then whoever plans for certain things in life that happen to you. We all make a plan, but God's plans are always different. So this particular night, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided, that's it, I'm done. I'm going to get out of this world. I started walking back and forth across this dark road that was on a curve in a hill. Because I figured, if somebody hits me, I'm going to die. But then I thought... What if I don't die? Then the person who hits me is going to feel really bad, and I don't want to hurt their feelings because they, they tried to kill me, but it didn't work because I was stupid. But I'm walking back and forth, and it's late at night. It's a dark, <coughs> dark area. And I get across, and I thought, well, nobody yet. So I turn around, and I go back the other way. <laughs> and I do it again, and I get to the other side and turn around. There's somebody standing on this side of the road. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm thinking, where the heck did you come from? It's like 11.30 at night. Where'd you come from? Okay, I didn't see anybody walking, didn't hear anything. And he said, so what are you doing over there? I said, well, I'm just 
walking across the road. He said, that's kind of stupid, isn't it? I'm like, well, no, not if you want to accomplish what I want to accomplish. He says, well, what if somebody else has something better for you? What? I'm like, what are you talking about? It says in Jeremiah that God has a plan for our life. I didn't know that plan then. Forty years later, I'm still working on the plan. <laughs> I don't get it right all the time, but I try. Well, that God asks of me. But these verses contain the key to release from our prisons. We have to know the truth, and then we have to know Jesus Christ, who is the Son. He's the way, the truth, and the light. There's no way to get to God except through Jesus Christ. Many times, we people leave our past prisons and things people have said or done in their past rule their life. Anybody do that? Mm -hmm. Anybody have deep, dark secrets? Now, I've shown you some of my battle scars, okay? I was afraid of failing. I wanted to be married. Well, that didn't work out the first time, so here I am, fear of failure, suicidal. Because I don't plan on that. You don't get married and plan to get divorced. But it happens. So what do you do? I thought I would list a few other prisons that some of you might have or know people who have had them or are still going through them. If anything up here appears in your battlefield, I don't care if it was something that happened to you when you were really little, for instance, rape, incest. If you were a child, it wasn't your fault. If it was grown-ups doing it to you, they know better. They shouldn't have done it. you got to give that crap to God and don't take it back. If you have a drinking problem, you need to give it to God and stop. There's no profit in it. What can you do that's going to benefit God by drinking or doing drugs or going out and killing you or somebody else? There's a purpose for every person in this room. Do I know what that is? No, but I know he who does, God. And you're the only person that he has in this life, in this day, in this time. The people that you'll meet each and every day, in the evening, you guys play music, you're out in crowds all the time. You have no idea who God's going to reach through you. But if you're not at the top of your game, how, is, how are you going to do that? How are you going to be his eyes and his ears and his, his mouth? How are you going to carry yourself? Like, hey, I've been drunk once in my life. Tell me, what it was funny for the people around me. It wasn't funny for me when I fell down the steps. And that smartened me up enough. I was like, ooh, i got a dress on. That's not good. Who benefited from that? Everybody around me got a good laugh. I was embarrassed. I had shame. I've done things I've been guilty for. But I'm humble enough to say, God, I'm sorry. And that's all we have to do. God gave us a way to get out of stuff. <clears throat> and let me tell you something. Your prison that you deal with personally, that you think nobody knows about, Eventually, they know it because you can't contain it all. It gets out of the box in the most unwanted places. When you're not looking, oh, there it is. Nobody's going to know that I'm like three sheets to the wind. Do I really look stupid? <laughs> you know, am I high as a kite? I don't know. I've never been high. Well, that's not true. When I had my operation, they gave me something that made me really wacky, but I didn't do that on purpose. People do that on purpose for a reason. What it is, I don't know. But God knows. Everything you think is stuffed so far down there, God sees it. He's seen every hurt you've had. He's seen every heartbreak you've had. He's seen, he's seen the victories. We like, I like to see victories. Because then I can rejoice and be happy with whoever's rejoicing. Peggy's got a great thing going on now with her sister, and I'm so happy for that. But she didn't get there by herself. She had people praying for her.
praying for her family, for fertile ground. What do we know about each other? How do we help each other out of these prisons that we've put ourselves in or we were thrown into? Let's put it that way. Because sometimes trauma stuff happens and you're not expecting it and you're not ready for it and you surely don't know how to handle it. What do you do? Go out on a limb by yourself? Walk across a dark road? No. You have to stay in the household. You have to get with somebody who can love you and encourage you. So it's not God's will for us to be so mentally bound in our lives. You know, I think of the Tigger in Winnie the Pooh as opposed to Eeyore. I never liked Eeyore. Oh, woe is me. Oh, is my tail on today? Like, who cares if your tail's on? But Tigger's like, whoa! <laughs> he's just a happy character. He does get on your nerves, but he's a very happy character. He moves, right? Mm -hmm. We ought to try to be a little more like Tigger. Psalm 103, verse 11 and 12 says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear or respect him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So you know what? Did I get rid of all of these things? Most of them. I still have days, just I'm sure some of you do. A memory will come across and you're taken right back to that time. Maybe a tear gets shed. Or you have a happy tear because, oh, that's the way the, my dad loved this time of year. And, oh, that tree, he would really love that tree. Not only does God want us free from all these secret things that we have in our battlefield, for those of you who are on the phone, some of the things in this battlefield are bullying, the loss of a parent, a child, a sibling, friend, miscarriage, depression, condemnation, low self-esteem, Fear. Fear comes in many different categories. So don't just chalk up fear like, eh, it's just fear. I'm just afraid of this. There are lots of levels. If you think of an onion, there are lots of levels that you have to peel back to get to the really good stuff in the middle. But once you peel all those things away, how much freer? You don't have all that weight. I think it would be nice and trim like an onion, right? <laughs> Lying, hopelessness, addictions, stress, guilt. It takes so much effort to hold on to any one of those, let alone several. To keep your mind working it, to say, oh yeah, let's mull it over a little more. Oh yeah, we're not quite ripe enough yet. Oh, we're not quite hurt enough yet. Let them stab me again. Because that's what that'll do when you keep all of this in your heart and in your mind. Now. Man brought it on himself with Adam right from the get go. I know they blame us women, <laughs> but Adam was the head and he should have been reeling yes, his wife true. in saying, Yo, dude, we're not doing this. Right? But he didn't, so here we are in a we're crooked and perverse world. But God so lovingly provided a way which men might recognize and receive greater and more wonderful power than they ever had before. Anybody guess where we're going? Jesus. Romans chapter 10. If you have not read these verses and confessed them yet, I exhort you to do it. Read it silently. Read it out loud. It doesn't matter. You just have to do it. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 say, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So, once we do that, guess what? We get a new crown! <laughs> right? Now, as you can see, there still may be some scars under there. They don't go away right away. Because we're not the kind of people who, like, right away hand over the store. Here, okay, you could have it. Could we be? Absolutely. But it doesn't happen that way. Jesus Christ is the sweetest name I know. Yeah. In him alone, 
There are unlimited possibilities in men and women. It's in Jesus' name that men and women are saved, born again, converted from the evil of this world to the good that God has available to us. In Jesus' name, the sick are healed. <laughs> the deaf can hear. Ah, God is good. In the name of Jesus Christ, devil spirits are cast out and people's minds, hearts, and bodies are freed forever. Amen. Forever. Yes. But unless we know that Jesus Christ as a vital living reality, hey bro, I don't go anywhere without my brother. <laughs> Me and Jesus in a room, that's it. Me and him make a majority. Whoever's not born again, right. you're in trouble because the light's here now. Amen. Right? Yes. Yes. And you have to have that attitude. When you go into a room, you have to say, Dang it, God, look, it's awful dark in here, don't you think? Well, let's just clear the way. If it takes you one person at a time to uplift that room, God's going to hang with you the whole time you're there. He's not in a hurry. He's not going anywhere. And Jesus, he's here with me all the time anyway. Do I always do what he wants me to do? No. I'm sorry. I try but I have my days. That's right. We don't want to limit God in our lives because of our past, because of the nagging things in the back of our head. We've been freed from that. We have to believe it. All right? I know you guys are just loving my examples here. <laughs> Make sure I put the tape. Okay, now, this is the transformation of a butterfly. I decided to put that one right here so you can sort of all see it. Because once we're born again, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not conform yourselves or pattern yourself to this world, but be transformed like a butterfly mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, so now, you ready for this? There's some really interesting things you can learn about a butterfly. Other than they spit when they're... <laughs> but that was a trauma to me when I was very young. I picked up this nice, cute, little, cuddly thing, and it like... So, yeah. I'm not into worms, and I'm not into whatever they are. Caterpillars. <laughs> Anyhow, in Romans 10, 9, and 10, we're born of God's seed. So we're like the egg of the butterfly. Right? Stage two. We're the caterpillar. The, the, yeah, the cute and cuddly caterpillar. A caterpillar's main activity is eating. I'd love to be a caterpillar for that reason. <laughs> However, they almost never stop eating so that they can grow quickly before they go to the third stage of life. Now, butterflies increase their body mass over a hundred times larger than its birth size. I wouldn't like that aspect of being a caterpillar. In Jeremiah verse 15, or chapter 15, verse 16, it says, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. See, as we move from Romans 10, 9, and 10 being born again, we need to feed ourselves to keep going in this cycle. And that means you have to read the word. You have to be around people who are telling you what the word is so that you can suck it on in like you're a sponge give me more give me more because the more that that comes in as nick was sharing about uh eureka that guy archimedes, archimedes. yeah archimedes thank you he gets in the water it displaces everything well as we put the word in our minds and our hearts the bad stuff's gotta go Amen. it's yeah. gotta go yes, it's got nowhere yes. else to stay the light's gotta whoop if you lived in Norristown and worked in a factory down by the river, when you turn a light on in a room, man, you see those bugs. Yeah. They scatter when you turn the lights on. Well, devil spirits have to do the same thing in the name of Jesus Christ. So, all right, now, we're at stage three. 
the chrysalis or the pupa <laughs> or papa p u p a the chrysalis hangs down from the twigs or safe area around the plant where it took birth during this stage the old body parts of the caterpillar go through an incredible change called metamorphosis in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And, oh, I wanted to share that with you, too. When a caterpillar is born, it doesn't stray very far from that leaf it's put out on. And it just, like, eats everything around it. So that it doesn't have to exert so much stuff. When we get into the Word, we don't want to... Yeah, well, maybe I'll come to church today. Oh, did you say there's fellowship Thursday? Well, if I'm not busy, maybe I'll come. You have to make a decision in your mind, and then God can bless your actions as you progress in that manner. Stage four, the adult butterfly. Here we are, beautiful. When the butterfly emerges from a chrysalis, its wings are wet and wrinkled. We're not pretty in the morning when we get up. I don't know about you. Unless you use a can of hair net and keep your makeup, you spray your face a little too. So you wake up and it's like, ooh, yeah, I'm ready for the day. I wish. Yeah. The butterfly hangs with its wings down and starts pumping a liquid called hemolymph to their wings so that they become big and strong. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. What better place is there for us to be seated? Amen. Amen. Yeah. We're up here looking down. Yeah. How cool is that? Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Those people who aren't born again, I'm sorry, you're not going when the boat says, Yip, let's go. Yeah, that's right. So if there's somebody you love yes. and you don't want them to be left behind, you've got to start opening your mouth and talking to them. Share it. Figure out, ask God how to reach them. Because only you can do that in your circle. I can't come into a Hispanic-speaking family that doesn't speak English and start spewing the word in English, and they're going to look at me like, oh, I got horns on my head. <laughs> it's not going to work. That's why in our circles we have to know who we're around. We have to see how their quirks work <clears throat> and how we can reach them. Just like a teacher in the olden days, teachers. And I say that because to me, a teacher is somebody who will reach every person in the room. Whether you're on the lowest rack of the totem pole or you're at the top of the class. They're gonna figure out a way so that you know exactly what she knows. Right. You may have to take a different way to get there, but they're gonna get there. That way, nobody really gets left behind. So. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Okay, if you know something about me and you see I'm not acting the way I should according to the word, I don't have a problem with you coming up to me and saying, um, Kim, you're acting a little dark here. Like, you had no hope. See, I just put on my big boy pants and I say thank you very much. Because a lot of times, here you go. If I were to look in this mirror, what would I see? The wrinkles? I, mean, I don't have that many wrinkles, but I'm thankful for that. There are days when, when I see where I could have done better in the life of one of my kids. Or some, my mother, who makes me a little crazy. I, I figure, okay, God, you have to help me. Because I just can't do things on my own sometimes. But when I look in this mirror, sometimes whoop, the fear of failure comes out. Like, oh, I'm never going to be any good. I'm never going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. I feel hopeless today. 
You know, I miss my kid. I'm sad. Okay? It's a part of life. I know that. I also know he's going to get up. But that doesn't make me miss him anymore. But when I look in the mirror, if that's all I see is all my imperfections and everything in my past thrown at me, but I don't see Christ, where am I going? Not very far that day. All right. We have to bear with each other and, for, and forgive one another. If we have a grievance against somebody, guess what? Forgive as the Lord forgives you. What has God... <coughs> Let me tell you something. When you lose a kid, it's not easy. God gave his kid. I never would have given my kid. God gave his kid for me. What am I going to do with that? How much... Do I know because of the loss that it takes. I know how much love he had for us to be able to do that. Why do I want to sit in squalor? Why do I want to keep dealing with the crap from my past? Why don't I just want to do what the Word says? Because you know what? When Christ died mm -hmm. and He yes. was resurrected, Amen. His blood, His blood covered it all. Not just part of it. It covered every piece. Every broken piece. Every thought you ever had that was wrong, he covered it because he loved you. Man, he went, I think we're sharing last week, he went into the garden to pray, Father, if this cup, take it away from me. I don't know, son, it's not time yet. Please, Dad, if I don't, I don't want to do it. But if it's your will, I'll do it because I love you and I'm going to do your will. He did that for you. How important are you? When you get up in the morning, do you stick your, if you're a woman, <laughs> pull back your shoulders and stick out your ladies? Uh -oh. That's the strength of your shoulders, see that? Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. If I didn't, Nick has to give me a little bit of time when I have to prepare a teaching because I'm not very good with it. So I yes, just keep, are. God keeps you working. So I'm in a car and he's throwing things here and I'm like, I can't text and drive. And if I could figure out a thing to press to record, I would do that. But I can't do that either. So it's like every stoplight's like, oh no, I don't know how to do shorthand. What the heck did that mean, God? So he's been telling me things over and over and over in different ways. So you guys have lots of examples. But he's always admonishing me to do this. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to. He's like, but you need to do it. And it's true. I do. And I'm always happy when I'm done. Because <laughs> I know he's going to pick on somebody else next time. But... <laughs> You always reach us. So, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns. Somebody show me a Bible. That's how we're going to get it. Through the psalms and the hymns, through the word, and through our deeds. Man, what do we want to do for people? Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. When this great transformation takes place and we do not limit God, then we will not talk about worry or fear, anxiety, sickness, or want. God will supply all your need. If you don't have something that you think you absolutely need, think about it again because chances are pretty good you don't need it. You just want it. Because we're the kind of people who want stuff that really isn't good for us. It may get us off the road that we're supposed to be on. Just saying. We forget the negatives, for we are sons by the one who overcame. Jesus Christ overcame the grave. It don't get any better than that. We had nothing to do with the new birth except to allow it take place in our lives. God's the miracle worker. Think about it. You're a masterpiece. Before I got in the Word, I was called a lot of things. Masterpiece <laughs> was not one of them. 
it was not. I really wish it would have been, but it wasn't. So, so from once we accept Jesus as Lord in our lives, we're God's kids. God's kids. Do you ever tell yourself that? Mm -hmm. I'm God's kid. I'm a princess. <laughs> Pat's a queen. <laughs> Don't limit God. We belong to the family of God. We're all children. We're brothers and sisters. If you don't have your family that you can depend on, what do you have? Your brother already laid down his life for you. I'm sorry, I'm not there yet. I'm not laying my life down for you yet. But for God, I would. Amen. And if that means yeah. that every day of my life I serve and try to help somebody else out of a pit that they've dug or was dug for them, then I'm on board for that. And I'm okay because I know that not only me, God will never give you more than you can handle without a way to escape. And I know it says that in the Word, but I'm not exactly sure. Then, and God is able to make all grace abound, we are no longer servants who know not what their reward, that you always having all sufficiency. We are the sons of God. We have sufficiency in all things that may abound to every good work. Satan has no further legal rights over you. No. None. No. Absolutely none. Unless, unless we permit him. Did you ever open the door and you want to go in to, to see somebody that doesn't want to see you? And you stick your foot in the door as they're closing it because they don't want you to come in? Guess what? Once that door is cracked, the devil's sly. He's going to come in. And he's not coming in alone. He's bringing friends. Hey, there's a party at Richard's house. Woo! <laughs> We're going to go party at Richard's. But if Richard shuts that door... And he has his brothers and sisters, or the Queen of Audubon, Jeffersonville with him. There ain't nobody coming, because he's got backup. Yeah. When Christ died on Calvary, he was our complete Savior. Nothing was left undone. Nothing. His, his, we are complete. It says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, we are complete in him. If you're not feeling complete, pick up the phone and call somebody. If you're struggling with something, pick up the phone and call somebody. Get in your car and drive to their house. Don't do it alone. God doesn't want us to be alone. He gave us his son. We have to accept that as, yeah, I'm special. We're all special. We're spirit-filled men and women who are well-pleasing in God's sight. So I don't ever want you to think that your past is going to make who you are in the future. Because your future was changed the day you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. So that's what I wanted to share about. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouragement. And thank you that we have one another to lean upon during these times of trouble and times of rejoicing. Thank you, Father, that we can remember you every day and keep you first. In the name of Jesus Christ, we praise your holy name. Amen. 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 It's time to stay awake, watching o'er the sea. For we don't know what lies ahead Tempest or storm My duty is to warn This video was a presentation of Chapter and Verse Ministry Practical Research and Teaching Ministry um, Our website is cvm.church Or you can call us at 610 Six five zero eight four four nine, and thank you very much for your patronage.